There's a pretty weird but very cool link between NASA and whale sharks that I'm guessing a fair few of you might not have heard about before. 30 years ago, it was kind of tough to track these sharks across the ocean, and most of the time, scientists had to use expensive satellite tags that weren't exactly 100% reliable. But in 2003, that all changed after a chance email and subsequent partnership between a marine biologist, a software programmer, and an astronomer working for NASA. Fast forward 20 years, and our knowledge about the biggest fish in the sea has completely exploded, all thanks to those three scientists. So come with me today as we look into this strange link between the cosmos and the ocean, and together we'll learn how that chance collaboration might just help save this big spotty fish from extinction. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Now, I think whale sharks are one of the coolest shark species out there. You can't quite imagine just how big they are until one of them calmly cruises past you like a school bus on a road. And while they're swimming past, you should be able to catch a quick glimpse of the pattern that's all over their body. Hundreds and hundreds of white spots and a few stripes thrown in for good measure. We're not entirely sure why their pattern like this, but most theories point to it being somewhat related to camouflage. The spots and stripes help break up the outline of the whale shark when seen from above, especially when the rays of sunlight shine down through the water and reflect off their patterning, making it harder for predators to spot them. Yet, despite being the biggest fish in the sea, whale sharks still aren't safe from the carnivorous fish they share their range with. Look at the size of that monster bite wound. Anyway, where were we? Spot patterns. For years, scientists puzzled over the spot patterns of whale sharks, trying to learn what purpose they served and whether they could give us any clues about how how the sharks live their lives. None more so than marine biologist Brad Norman. Back in 1995, Brad had completed an undergraduate degree in marine science at Murdoch University in Western Australia. And at the time, he was doing volunteer research for the Department of Parks and Wildlife at Ningaloo. Ningaloo is a UNESCO World Heritage Site about 700 miles north of Perth. It's essentially in the middle of nowhere, nestled right on the northwest coast of Australia, looking out into the eastern Indian Ocean. But because it's so remote, Ningaloo is an absolute mecca for marine wildlife. Whales, turtles, and dugongs all use utilize these pristine waters at various times of the year, but between March and August, it's a hot spot for whale sharks. Drawn in by the abundant plankton, these sharks return year after year in big numbers to eat their fill before heading off out back into the deep. It's one of the best places in the world to swim with these animals, and that's exactly what Brad Norman did for the very first time in 1995. Back then, Ningaloo Reef wasn't the ecotourism powerhouse that it is today, with only around a thousand people jumping in to swim with the whale sharks that season. For Brad, though, the experience was life-changing. After watching one of these school bus-sized fish swim past him, he realized that this animal could potentially be a flagship marine species for conservation. Flagship species are often used to help generate conservation income, which then goes on to help other species that might not have got the attention. Think of the panda in the WWF logo. That's a flagship species. Anyway, Brad put his name forwards to the Department of Parks and Wildlife to do a study on the whale sharks at Ningaloo to try and learn a little bit more about them. And at the same time, he decided to form the non-profit organization Ecotion to try and help carry out the research and educate tourists about the sharks. He wanted to get the ball rolling as quickly as possible and start collecting data. So instead of waiting around and formulating the idea as a PhD, he decided to do it as a master's instead. His specific area of research aimed to figure out the impact of the Ningaloo tourist industry on the whale sharks, because even though the tourism was still in its infancy back then, it was still generating enough interest to potentially be affecting the sharks. The first hurdle he came up against, though, was to try and find a way to identify between individuals within that Ningaloo population. It's no good if you can't tell which shark is which, because rather unhelpfully, whale sharks tend to look almost identical on the face of it. At the time, Brad had read about scientists in Africa who were using variations in the spot patterns of leopards to distinguish between individuals. He'd initially noted that the spots on the whale sharks looked to be different to each other, but it was really hard to tell, so he decided to start photographing them underwater. Specifically, he took photos just behind the gill slits, but before the end of the pectoral fin, as that seemed to be the area where the spot showed the most variation. And after each day in the water, he'd return home, upload the photos onto his laptop, and try and distinguish between the sharks by eye. As in literally getting pictures of whale sharks up side by side, and comparing them manually, which, as you can imagine, was an insanely laborious and painstaking process. And he did that for several years, discovering that the whale shark spot pattern was indeed unique to each individual, essentially like what a human fingerprint is. By this point, Brad had built up a decent-sized database of individual whale sharks using photographs that he and some other volunteers had taken, but also using tourist photos as well. As long as people took a photograph of the correct place on the shark, i.e. just after the fifth gill slip, but before the end of the pectoral fin, then he had a standardized method. But the identification process was time consuming. Imagine having a database of hundreds and hundreds of sharks and every time that you thought you had a new individual, you had to manually go through that database, scrolling through them one by one and comparing them side by side by eye. It would literally take hours. And as well as those time constraints, the process was also strewn with errors. The human eye, or more specifically the brain, can often play tricks on you when you're looking at images like this and see things that just aren't there. So it wasn't exactly a scientifically foolproof method. In 2003, 
received, though, a chance email from a software program that was about to change the entire process. Jason Holmberg from Oregon in the US had taken a trip to Djibouti and was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to swim with whale sharks there. And he, like most people who jump into the water with a whale shark, became infatuated with them. So much so that he started to read about them on the internet and came across a marine scientist in Australia who had just figured out that whale shark spot patterns were like human fingerprints. Jason decided to reach out to Brad to see if he might be able to use his programming skills to help build him a bigger and better database. Building a newer database was all well and good, but the issue still remained of having to manually scroll through all of those images one by one. Although one of Jason's old college friends, Zarvan, came up with an incredibly unique idea. Zarvan Arzumanian was working as an astronomer for NASA at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. As part of his work for NASA, Zarvan was tasked with identifying new star patterns in space viewed via the Hubble Space Telescope. You know, that little satellite thing that orbits Earth taking pictures all the time? Anyway, in that work, he used a computer algorithm to help identify the star patterns deep in space because it would just be impossible to do that by eye. And after a few chats with Jason and Brad over email, Zarvan wondered whether the algorithm might be able to recognize the patterns on the whale sharks. Excited at the prospect, he got to work on modifying the NASA star pattern software and with a few tweaks here or there, it might be able to pick out each individual spot along the side of the shark. After those modifications, Aussie marine scientist Brad and American programmer Jason began testing the software on the database of images Brad had been collecting since 1995. To their amazement, the repurposed NASA software managed to rapidly narrow down the number of potential matches from a database of thousands and thousands of images. A few years later in 2005, the trio of scientists wrote a research paper together, specifically this one here, which revealed the NASA program had the ability to distinguish between individuals at an accuracy rate of 90% way more reliable than the human eye. Despite that impressive accuracy rate, the final analysis is always double-checked by cross-matching any dorsal or coral fin notches or even scars on the body, just to be sure that ID is correct. After fine-tuning that software, Brad, Jason, and Zarvan together created the Wild Book for Whale Sharks. And the first entry to that database was this particular shark here, the first shark that Brad had ever swum with at Ningaloo, Stumpy, nicknamed after his damaged tail, although his official name is A001. A for Australia, and then the first into the database. Stumpy's been returning to Ningaloo Reef for two decades now, and Brad Norman gets to swim with him every single year. The Wild Book for Whale Sharks specifically has the NASA software built into the website, which allows citizen scientists from all over the world to submit their own photos of whale sharks. And that data is then used by shark scientists to learn more about the movements of these animals. Because if you have someone submit a photo on a particular day and time of an individual whale shark in one location, and then someone else submits a photo at a later date in a different location that turns out to be the same individual, you then know that particular shark has moved from point A to point B in X amount of time. And just having that information is so crucial in helping us understand their movements around the ocean. It's shown us that juvenile whale sharks tend to stick fairly close to their usual feeding grounds, not really venturing more than a few hundred miles away from them. Whereas the adults, especially the adult females, are big migrators, sometimes traveling upwards of tens of thousands of miles. To date, the Wild Book for Whale Sharks photo database has identified over 11,000 individual whale sharks spanning across 50 different countries. It's pinpointed several whale shark aggregation sites or hotspots around the world World, including Ningaloo in Australia, the Atlantic coast of Mexico near Isla Holbox, Mozambique in Africa, and the Philippines. That latter location there is also the home of a new whale shark that I identified all the way back in 2017, nicknamed Leo after my late granddad, although his official name is P997, as in Philippines, and the 997th individual that was identified there. Make sure you let me know in the comments if you want a video about the research that I was doing there, by the way. Also, looking at that there, I was actually so close in getting the Philippines' 1,000th whale shark. Absolutely gutted. <laughs> anyway, the online database these days is now so much more than just a whale shark citizen science project. WildMe, which encompasses the whale shark photo database, hosts a bunch of other projects for identifying wildlife from manta rays to zebra and even wild dogs. They're also now using artificial intelligence to process through those thousands and thousands of sightings even faster than they were able to do before and with higher accuracy rates as well. Now, despite the star mapping software advancing our knowledge of these big spotty fish significantly, whale sharks unfortunately are still classified as an endangered species. It was actually partly because of Wild Book that whale sharks were even classified on the IUCN red list in the first place, moving from indeterminate in 1994, which basically means they had no idea, to vulnerable in the year 2000, and then endangered in 2016. But by understanding more about where these animals move to, it means we can implement conservation measures in the right areas in order to save them from going extinct. All because a marine biologist, a software programmer, and an astronomer decided to form an unlikely collaboration. Kind of sounds like the start of a bad joke, doesn't it? 
it. I guess the story just shows us, though, you never know who's waiting for you just around the corner. And strange collaborations like the one between Brad, Jason, and Zarvan can sometimes have unexpected but very important outcomes. I love whale sharks, man. They're such a cool fish, and they're always doing weird stuff as well. Like this one here that just decided to start eating sand, which is the first time a whale shark has ever been caught on film doing this. And if you want to know precisely why it was eating that sand, I tell you all about it in this video here. So make sure you give it a click, because it's not what you might expect. Go on, I'll see you there.